Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing the EZSMX YS06 Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Now, this controller was provided to me free of charge by EZSMX, but just so we're perfectly clear, this is not a paid review. They simply offered to send me their controller so I could check it out. And because I checked out their previous controller and I actually found it pretty darn interesting, well, of course, I accepted to check out the YS06 because it actually seemed to solve the only single issue that I really had with their previous controller. But we'll go through that in the overview section of the controller. Now, if this is the first controller review of mine that you're watching, just so you know, I do have a regular process I go through. There's a specific video from about a year and a year and a half ago that details exactly what I do to evaluate my controllers. If you want, you can check that video out, but if not, you'll get 95% of what you need directly in this video. So basically we'll start with a close up on the controller so we can take a look at the features. Then we'll get directly to the general scoring of the controller and finally the game testing scores for this controller. Now, if you do want to pick up this controller after the review, I will be leaving Amazon affiliate links down below in the video, as well as links to uh, EasySMX website since they were nice enough to send me the controller, I'll at least link their website in the video. And now the last thing before we get started, don't forget that if you do like these videos and you want to see more, please hit the like button. It's the best way to support the channel and also subscribe if you aren't already. So as usual, I like to take a quick look at the box and at the same time, it's going to answer probably a very important question for some of you out there. If you're not into that whole lion tiger design thing, yes, there are multiple versions of this controller available with more low key aesthetics, even one that looks like a knockoff almost Pokemon controller. Now the box is your very standard fare for a third party controller. It doesn't feel like the highest quality box, but overall what we're really interested in is the controller and not the box. Uh, on the bottom, you have the basically version choices of the controller. This one lets you know that it's the Tiger, Tiger Lion design. On the side, they quickly go through the main functions of the controller, but we'll see that more in the overview. The rest of the box is pretty standard fare with just some branding. And at the back, they give you a quick setup of how to charge and basically connect the controller as well as how to increase or decrease the rumble feature. Here we are. This is what we're all here to see. And by the way, my choice for taking the line design on this controller was because overall I let my daughter choose the controller and she was really into Lion Tiger. So when she saw this, it was like, dad, I want you to ask for that version. And I was happy to comply because overall I didn't have a white controller. And I do still find that the aesthetic is fairly different than from all the other controllers I already own. Now, first of all, for the overall shape and feel of this controller, if you've ever held a Power A third party controller, this controller feels almost identical. It has a very, very similar shape and overall physical design. Now for the joysticks, the joysticks feel pretty good, but they do feel more plasticky than rubbery. If you start playing around with them, you do realize that they do have a rubberized texture, but right away when you're feeling at them, if you compare it, let's say to a standard pro controller, they do feel more plasticky than rubbery than a standard pro controller. But nonetheless, they move very well. They have a full range of motion and overall the feeling is pretty decent. Now the rest of the face buttons are clicky buttons that do not feel mushy at all, which is something that I really like. So overall, the rest of the buttons on this controller do feel pretty great. Even the plus minus home button and capture button are clicky buttons. I prefer that to the rubbery buttons uh, overall because it just has a better feeling in it to me. And lastly, one of the most surprising elements, I think to me, the D-pad actually feels really good on this controller. It is actually quite a tight D-pad and it also has a a clicky response once again, which is something I really like about this D-pad. So I was actually pleasantly surprised by that. If ever you're looking for the turbo button, it is pretty well hidden right here. There's a little T button. That is your turbo functionality. So when you want to activate your turbo functionality, you hold the T button down, the button you want to activate, it activates your turbo for you. You hold it down, you press the button again, it'll deactivate the turbo. Now, if we flip to the top of the controller, you have your standard ZR, ZL trigger shape, which is something, once again, that is very appreciated. I hate when they don't do a trigger shape on the back buttons because it's just easier when you're feeling for the button to know exactly which one you're hitting. And finally, you have your little pairing button. And yes, this is USB-C type charging. 
I've said it before, I'm tired of seeing micro USB, so I am really happy that this one charges through USB Type-C. It is time that every controller does that. Now, if we flip to the back of the controller, there's really nothing much to see here other than access to a general reset button for your controller if ever you're really having pairing problems with it. Actually, the only reason I'm showing you the back is just to specify that unfortunately the back is not texturized. And it's maybe only one of the one thing that sort of disappointed me a little bit of this controller is I would have liked to see at least texturized grips on it because it really, really does help the controllers a lot out in their overall feel, especially for long gaming sessions. So just before we move on, let's do an overview on the functions of this controller. So first of all, yes, it is wireless and there is a rechargeable battery. So that is a plus. As we just said, it charges with USB-C. Motion controls work perfectly fine on this controller and are present. On top of it, yes, it does have a rumble functionality. It is not haptic feedback, but it is a pretty decent standard rumble and you can adjust the level of rumble that you want. To and lastly, on its functions, it is adding a turbo functionality that is not present on most other controllers. Now, however, what does it not have? It does not have NFC compatibility. It cannot read amiibos, basically. And secondly, this is maybe something that some people will be disappointed in, but it cannot wake up the switch. Unfortunately, your switch has to be turned on first, and then you have to hold down the home button for the controller to recognize the switch. It unfortunately can't wake it up from a distance. To me, that is a pretty minor gripe, but I still want to mention it in the review because for some people out there, it'll maybe be more important. So now that we have a general overview of this controller, it's time for the scoring. And as usual, we'll always start with the general feel and build quality of the controller. And for this category, I'm going to be giving the YS06 a 3.5. Look, I had a really tough time put placing this controller on the scale of 1 through 5 because it felt really low at a 3, but at a 4, it just didn't seem quite to have enough to get there. Number one, as I said on the, in the overview, basically the lack of a texture I'd finished in the back felt like it didn't belong with some controllers that did hit the four because of those type of features. And number two, the sort of plasticky rather than rubbery feeling uh, joysticks were another point. But a three seemed too low because this controller actually really impressed me. I didn't expect it to feel as good as it did, and it still does a really solid job overall. Now, the last section before we actually get to the gaming scores is the features and aesthetics of this controller. And this is where this controller is going to be scoring a massive 8 out of 10. I mean, this controller for its price is really feature packed. Number one, it hits almost all the standard features of the Pro Controller. So, of course, it doesn't have haptic feedback, but it does have rumble. It has motion control. It is wireless. It has a rechargeable battery. Plus, it's using USB Type-C, which is something that right now I don't even want to hear about micro USB anymore on controllers. And on top of it, aesthetics wise, of course, it'll depend on the model and your personal taste. But the aesthetics wise, they're offering a decent variety of aesthetics for this controller, meaning that it's going to be getting a couple of extra points for that. And on top of it, it's offering a feature that the Pro Controller does not. It has a turbo functionality. Now, whether you're going to use it and whether it's useful in every game is a case by case issue. But nonetheless, it's getting a bonus point for that as well, which gives it overall its awesome score. So now we move on to the gaming scores. And the first category we're going to look at is 3D action and FPS games. And in this category, this controller is going to be scoring a massive 9 out of 10. Now, this controller is perfectly suited for this type of gaming. Basically, whether it be the fact that it has motion controls, it has rumble, and on top of it, it's throwing in an extra turbo functionality. Now, of course, it's going to be more a case-by-case -case basis if it's useful in this category of gaming, but it's there if you need it. And basically, the only thing keeping it from a perfect score in this category would be having a slightly better feel overall in your hand for long gaming sessions, like a texturized back. So next, we move on to 2D platformers and side scrollers. And once again, this controller is going to be scoring a really awesome 9 out of 10 in this category. 
So once again, this controller is very well suited for this category of gaming. Basically, all the functionalities you need are there on the controller. And on top of it, it's throwing in the turbo function. And this is probably the category of gaming that will benefit most often from having a turbo function because some retro games really are much, much more uh, fun once you have that turbo function implemented on it. However, at the same time, not having the D-pad at the top left of the controller is the reason why this controller cannot score a perfect score in this category. But nonetheless, I think that this is a very solid offering for someone who get, get used to have the center D-pad. Now, the third category of gaming, as usual, will be 2D fighters or traditional fighters. And in this category, the controller will be scoring a respectable 8 out of 10. Now, the reason this controller is scoring lower in this category is very simple. This is the category that suffers the most from having a center D-pad. Because yes, for some motions, it is much more difficult since your thumb will be outstretched on this controller. It is also the category of gaming that generally benefits the least from having a turbo functionality as an added feature. So unfortunately, although this controller can do a very decent job for 2D fighters or traditional fighters, unfortunately, it is not the best gaming category for this controller, and there are better options out there if this is the main type of game you're playing. And now we get finally to our last category of gaming, which is racing and kart games. And this controller in this category will be back to a score of 9 out of 10. Now for this final gaming category, once again, this controller is offering everything you need to perform well in a racing game. It's also offering the rumble function for that level of immersion if the game also supports that function. Once again, however, this controller can't get a perfect score because unfortunately, this is one of the categories also that benefits the least from the added turbo functionality. And once again, the lack of that texturized back on the controller and the overall feel of the controller being just all that slightly off, unfortunately, will be less comfortable for long play sessions than a really nice texturized back controller. Now, overall, that's giving this controller a total score of 46.5 out of 55. That is a seriously high score for a third party $35 controller. Now, if you're on a tighter budget and you don't mind dealing with a third party controller rather than a first party controller, this is a really, really awesome alternative to the standard pro controller. I mean, all the functions are there minus the NFC. And personally, I can pr live perfectly without having NFC compatibility, and I think a lot of people out there won't mind missing that soul function as well. You also have to sort of keep in mind, however, that this controller does not wake up your Switch, so if that is a serious issue for you, I will reiterate that this controller unfortunately doesn't wake the Switch up. Me personally, I have no problem going and pushing on the little button to save $25 on a controller. That is a fair trade-off once again in my book. Now, as usual, the only thing that I sort of can test in my process is the long time durability of the controller. It is possible that maybe after a year or two, this controller would show more wear than your average pro controller. Maybe, maybe not. I have unfortunately no way of telling after a three week review process. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget if you want to pick up one of these controllers, the links are down below, as well as the link to the Easy SMX website. Also, if you ever want to support the channel, don't forget that the best way to do that is to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.